Blazing Rants are a segment where I discuss topics relating to the subject of video games and or anime. It contains my raw biased opinion and is created for the purpose of your debate, examination or discussion. Now that that's cleared up, let us begin. So, it's finally here. Fire Emblem Echo Shadows of Valentia has been released to the world and honestly, I'm still surprised this is actually a thing. After all, Gaiden isn't the first Fire Emblem game you'd think of when the idea of remaking the older games comes to mind. But hey, seems to have worked out for the best. So far, the general consensus surrounding Echoes has been pretty damn good. The fans seem to like it, in particular the veterans, and even newcomers are digging this game. The review scores have been all around positive, even with a few underwhelming scores here and there. It's a very bold step for the franchise in many ways, and after playing through the entire game myself, I can safely say that, yeah, Fire Emblem Echoes is definitely good. Though with that said, due to all the different opinions flying around as well as my own thoughts, there's certainly a lot to be said about Echoes. Many aspects of this game are done very well which people rather admire, and they have every right to. But at the same time, Echoes does fall flat in some areas, and those who address these issues bring up some valid arguments. I myself have found many positives and negative aspects about Echoes as well. This got me thinking as to whether or not Echoes really does live up to all the hype, or are the fans simply being blinded by nostalgia or the prospect of playing a Fire Emblem game that isn't fate? Not to mention, are IGN and Polygon's review scores not too far from the truth? Or are they too harsh on this game for lacking avatars and waifus? So I ask the question, just how good is Fire Emblem Echoes? Let's find out, shall we? First, a little history lesson. Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia is a remake of the second game in the series, Fire Emblem Gaiden, released on the NES back in 1992. Now most of you probably didn't even know about Gaiden before Echoes was announced, and this makes sense considering it was a Japan exclusive game and it is often referred to as the Black Sheep of the series, being incredibly different from just about every other game in the franchise and having mechanics and features that would never be used again until this very remake, keeping in line with the whole NES sequels trope like Mario Bros 2, Zelda 2 and Castlevania 2. I guess developers weren't once for repetition back then. Oh how times have changed. Being a remake, Echoes is very faithful to Gaiden and does its best to recreate the Gaiden experience as much as possible. So for those of you who are new to this series, or even those with quite a bit of experience, it's best to go into Echoes with a very open mindset, and not to get too hung up on some of the more modern Fire Emblem mechanics, otherwise you may have trouble getting into this game. So what exactly makes Echoes so special? Well, many things. First, there's the biggest feature that Echoes has going for it, dungeon exploring. While on the world map, you can visit various dungeons and explore them to find hidden items, change class, discover secrets and bonuses, as well as grind for experience. This is pretty much the selling point for Echoes, and it is great stuff. Dungeon exploring harkens back to the more traditional style of RPGs like Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest, and is a very nice change of pace from the standard Fire Emblem formula. Not to mention, there's a good number of dungeons throughout the game, and each one is different in terms of design and aesthetics, so this is one aspect of Echoes that is done incredibly well. Though it isn't perfect, but I'll cover that later. As for everything else, there are various mechanics and other elements exclusive to Echoes that, honest to god, really help to give this game a unique identity and greatly add to the experience. For starters, there is no weapon triangle in Echoes, which forces you to be more strategic with units and classes as things are a bit different this time around. Magic now works by being incredibly potent but costing HP to use, boasting high risks and high rewards, which I think is great and makes for some very tense do or die situations. I quite like the bonus EXP system used, as it helps to give everyone a little boost and reward units who performed well, and the weapons that you acquire such as the iron and steel lances have skills that can be unlocked for repeated use, which I absolutely love, as I feel it gives you a real incentive to try out various different weapons and abilities. You can even forge them with special coins you collect by exploring dungeons. Echo's class system is also pretty cool, allowing you many options to promote villager units into a variety of different classes, and the characters tend to promote at a good pace and keep things engaging. Even the fatigue system is fine and makes sense in the regards to how the game is structured. Without a doubt though, the best feature that Echoes has introduced is Miller's Turnwheel. Sweet mother of Shira on a Naga sandwich is Miller's Turnwheel amazing and I hope to god it returns in future games, as this mechanic allows you to rewind to specific points in the battle a select number of times, which is a wonderful addition that allows you to fix any mistakes made, but it doesn't allow you to abuse it constantly, whether it be a unit dying that isn't your lord, accidentally making a wrong move, or in my case, getting screwed over by the RNG by missing two 90% attacks in a row. Yeah, the RNG in this game isn't great, so this baby is a lifesaver, and it had better be in Fire Emblem Switch, or else. So when it comes to new features and mechanics, Echoes is right on point, but I also have to commend Echoes for its production values, as this is one of the most beautiful Fire Emblem games to date and is filled to the brim with visual and orchestral flair. The art style of this game is gorgeous, 
feeling like a perfect mix between Sacred Stones and Awakening, resulting in some of the best character designs in the entire series, and the overall look of this game is much more down to earth than the more recent titles, which I feel gives the world of Valentia a sense of realism and relatability, but still has tons of charm and charisma to it, and I hope this art style sees a return in future games. Not to mention the battle animations are really good as well, almost reaching Radiant Dawn levels of cool. In regards to the music, this is an aspect of Echoes that tends to get huge praise from players, as it is a very energetic and epic soundtrack and the updates to the original score are wonderful, but personally, I don't think the soundtrack is that good. I mean, it's a great soundtrack without a doubt, and some of the pieces are brilliant, but much like Radiant Dawn, while the game has some very standout songs, the rest of the tracks tend to blend into one another and become completely forgettable, so while yes, it is a great soundtrack, there are better in my opinion. Though with that said, one area of the sound department I can easily applaud is the voice acting. Being the first fully voice acted Fire Emblem game, they did a great job as every character sounds exactly like they should and the delivery is great, as it really adds to the game's personality and makes every character feel more alive. Special mention going to Myson and Bakut, easily the two best sounding characters in Echoes. Bakut in particular should get an Oscar for his performance. Speaking of characters, I love the cast of Echoes. Despite being one of the smallest casts in Fire Emblem, the heroes of Valentia are such a dynamic bunch of characters that I absolutely adore. I'll admit they're not the most interesting or entertaining cast in the grand scheme of things, but they're incredibly memorable and each of them are completely different from each other, not to mention a ton of fun to be around and just so likeable, so they're definitely one of my favourite Fire Emblem casts. Even if not all of them are great, you are the worst character to come out of the 3DS era that isn't an NPC! So aside from that gripe, with all this praise at the helm, you'd think that Echoes is one of the best games in the franchise, right? <sighs> People, I wish that were the case, but you couldn't be further from the truth. Now before you get ahead of yourselves, no, Echoes is not a bad game. No Fire Emblem game is bad, not even these ones. Echoes is a delightful game that just about any Fire Emblem fan can get something out of, and those looking for a more classic Fire Emblem experience will really enjoy this game. But while this game does a lot right, it is far from perfect and oh man does it shit the bed in certain areas. The biggest problem I, and quite a few others have found with this game, is the map structure and level design. Since Echoes is trying to be as faithful to Gaiden as possible, the level design is almost identical to the original, and as a result, the maps can range from okay at best, to utter crap at worst. So I'd say the level design is overall pretty bad. Now Echo's map design isn't bad like Binding Blade where a lot of those maps were just filled to the brim with bullshit, or Revelations which had gimmicks up the ass, but rather Echo's maps are just so bland and forgettable that they often fail to be engaging or entertaining, and for the life of me I can't remember 90% of the maps in this game, which is going to make scripting top 10 Echo's chapters a nightmare. Most of the maps in Echoes are just open fields with next to nothing in them, making the majority of encounters a case of who can reach cover first and turn it into a war of attrition. Throughout the entire game, I don't recall any escape or defend missions. In fact, most of the time it was just rout the enemies, so much so that it made Awakenings and look like conquest levels of quality in comparison. Rarely, and I mean rarely, would they ever introduce specific stipulations to make things more interesting, and the game is guilty of copying and pasting levels from earlier on, only with new enemies. I counted at least three times they used this particular map throughout the game, which is just lazy. Now to be fair, recycling chapters in Fire Emblem isn't new, but they've never done it to this extent. Plus, some of these levels are just plain bad, at least in my opinion. Remember Nui Baba's chapter and the bullshit death spell that put you on 1 HP unless you had a dread fighter? How about all those tedious boat maps that plagued Acts 2 and 6? Look at all these open fields. Man, do I enjoy playing through maps that have nothing in them. This right here? This is level design. I mean, who doesn't love using just one unit over and over again, because it's the only one that can safely retaliate against the enemy? Seriously, most of the maps in Echo suck. What makes this all worse is the lack of class variety. Now in Echo's defense, the lack of different Fire Emblem classes does make the game feel more distinctive and forces you to rely more on strategy with a limited number of different units at your disposal, so it works in the context of your army, but this does not bode well for enemy encounters. Echoes has a really nasty habit of throwing insane amounts of the same enemies at you in a good number of chapters, making battles rather formulaic and monotonous, especially when you can use a very small amount of units to counter an entire enemy battalion. I mean hell, I gave Claire a Rider's Bane and she soloed some of the earlier chapters. There were some maps in Echoes that were filled with only one type of class. Chapters that had you fight stupid amounts of archers most units couldn't strike back at. Levels that had a huge boner for summoning gargoyles and other monsters. Also, let's not forget how both Sonya and Dean's chapter had only Myrmidons and Witches as the enemies. 
The worst case offender of this is the dungeons, where not only do most battles use the same enemy types and formations, but the map layout hardly ever changes and the entire experience quickly becomes so repetitive, as once you've seen one battle, you've pretty much seen them all, making the game feel rather archaic and dated despite all the updates, and all of this culminates into my biggest problem with Echoes. It's actually rather boring. Don't get me wrong, I still enjoyed Echoes as a whole, and I'm not going to act like every Fire Emblem game is a fun time from beginning to end, as that's not true. The last third of Sacred Stones can get rather dull because of how easy it is, Shadow Dragon is an overall underwhelming game, and don't get me started on how boring Birthright can be at times, but the gameplay in Echoes is just so dull and lifeless that by Act 3, I was already getting tired of this game, and come Act 5, I just wanted it to end already. In fact, once I completed the game, I had no desire to go back to it at all, something I never felt with any Fire Emblem game except Radiant Dawn, and that's only because of how exhausting the game is. Heck, there isn't even a lunatic mode despite being a series staple at this point, so Echoes really doesn't offer much in terms of content. Though now that I think about it, that's probably the reason this game had so much of a focus on DLC, because god knows this game is already lacking in the replay value. Okay, so I've made it clear that map design and gameplay is the weakest aspect of the game, but there are other areas that while not as bad, still have their fair share of problems, the first one being the story. Now, 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 before you all issue me the death penalty for the, what was it now, sixth time? I'm not saying Echoes has a bad story. In fact, I think it's a pretty good story. There's a much bigger emphasis on the main team of heroes rather than the plot important characters. It's a much more personal story compared to most Fire Emblem games. It's got some great villains you just love to hate. And there are some really good themes of status and social standing that I admire, along with religious beliefs and clashing ideals. However, the story isn't great in my eyes, and I feel it gets a bit too much credit for what it is. My issues with the narrative are that from my perspective, there are many moments in the story that feel very forced and some of the actions characters do are rather unnatural and otherwise confusing, which can make certain parts of the story feel very jarring at times, most of which takes place in Celica's path I've noticed. Additionally, while I appreciate the focus on the main cast and the more personal vibe, Echo's story has a real lack of scope and doesn't feel very large or epic, so I wasn't as invested with this game as much as other Fire Emblem stories. Finally, I feel this game also has pacing issues, since while Acts 1 and 2 flow very nicely and give enough time to flesh out the story and characters, Act 3 pretty much goes from 0 to 100 right from the start, and most of the problems like the lack of scope and forced moments are present from here on out. Plus, it doesn't leave much time for certain plot threads or characters to properly develop, and some parts of the story feel like they come out of nowhere, often not making as much of an impact as the narrative intended. Though Echoes isn't the only game with this problem, Genealogy is very much the same case with its pacing, Yes, genealogy story isn't perfect, believe it or not. Despite all this, I see people really praising this game's story, and it's mainly just for the fact that it's such an improvement over Awakening and Fates. Which really isn't saying much, since those games set the bar rather low when it came to storytelling. And when you look at Echo's story for what it is, and in comparison to other Fire Island games, in my opinion, it's not that great. But it's still good, without question. And my final major complaint with this game is the support conversations. The support system in Echoes is odd to put it lightly, since it feels like a weird mix between the GBA, Radiant Dawn and Awakening system, in the sense that like the 3DS game, supports happen much quicker and there are visual indicators to show which characters can support together. It works like the GBA titles as characters can only support in battle and the amount of supports are much more limited, in fact they're almost too limited. And it also feels like Radiant Dawn, since most of the supports are nothing but small talk and feel kinda pointless. Granted, they're not nearly as bad as the Radiant Dawn supports, and there are some that are actually really well written, but most of them don't really add anything to the characters, and ultimately come off as redundant to me, especially since the amount of supports characters can have is pretty damn minimal. Granted, Fates did go overboard with the amount of supports in that game, and it did affect the overall quality of them. And with Fire Emblem, support conversations should be focused on quality rather than quantity, but in this case, there is a lack of both. In fact, most of the character development happens in the villager conversations. Though funny enough, I've seen people argue that having more conversations that are longer and more meaningful would be way too much work for the voice actors as they already have enough on their plate. Which I think is a dumb argument, since there are tons of other games that have just as much if not more voice acting than Echoes, and I don't see people saying those games overwork their voice actors, so why not make the most of them and go all out with their supports rather than just doing the bare minimum? And it's not like Intelligent Systems had to work with brand new material. These characters, personalities and backstories have already been established, so there's really no excuse for how uninspiring the supports are. At this point, it's obvious that Echoes has both positives and negatives, but hey, what game doesn't? And while I feel they've done a good job with this remake, I also see Echoes as a missed opportunity. This may cause you to raise an eyebrow too, but when I say missed opportunity, 
I'm referring to the fact that all the additional elements and exclusive features Echoes has are some of the best things to come out of Fire Emblem and could have easily made Echoes one of the best in the franchise. But since it's so focused on being as faithful to Gaiden as possible, many of the problems Gaiden had like the second rate level design, repetitive and overall archaic gameplay, make a lot of these additions null and void in the grand scheme of things and the flaws are even more noticeable in this day and age. For example, the lack of many classes and weapon triangle make things more strategic and challenging, but also make enemy encounters flavorless and dull. Dungeon exploring is great, but due to the uninspired map layout and enemies, it can get very repetitive. Additionally, while Gaiden's story and characters have been fleshed out and the game has brilliant production values, many of the more questionable and forced moments that occur in the original are still here and could easily have been worked around, as well as the majority of supports adding next to nothing to the characters and making them feel pointless resulting in Echoes feeling like a carbon copy of Gaiden with a new coat of paint and some very nice bells and whistles, but without addressing the issues that plague the original, which in my eyes makes Echoes an overall good remake, but not a great one, which is odd seeing as Nintendo are otherwise masters of this craft. Now, what do I think of Echoes personally? Well, Echoes is an odd one to me. Since all the new features and the exclusive content are the best aspects of Echoes and I love them so much that I hope become mainstays for future Fire Emblem games, Plus the game has a wonderful cast of characters and is one of the best looking and sounding Fire Emblem games to date. However, the main bulk of the game is where Echoes is at its weakest, and while the story, maps and supports aren't outright terrible, they're overall… passable. While outside elements definitely help to soften the blow and are great on their own, at the end of the day, I find Echoes to be a rather average Fire Emblem game at its core. It's actually rather ironic that when Echoes is trying to be its own thing and unique from every other entry, that's where it's at its best and it's a wonderful time. But when things get more familiar and traditional, Echoes kind of falls flat on its face. Though at the end of the day, I still think Echoes is a superb game that every Fire Emblem fan should add to their collection. Now I bet you're all wondering, how does it compare to the other 3DS titles? Well, it's kind of in the middle for me. Since while I think Echoes is better than Birthright and Revelations, it's not as good as Awakening and it doesn't even come close to being as good as Conquest. The same goes for how it holds up against the entire series, since to me it's not as weak as say Binding Blade or Shadow Dragon, but definitely not as strong as Path of Radiance or Blazing Sword. It's just kind of in the middle. So while not the best Fire Emblem game, it is far from the worst, and at the end of the day, it's still a Fire Emblem game. It's a fantastic RPG that you can sink tons of hours into, the level of quality we've come to expect from the series is still here, and it's one of the best experiences on the 3DS. I do significantly respect Echoes for what it has done for the series though, as making a game like this was a very risky move for intelligent systems, but it seems to have paid off, and showing that both the old and new fans can really enjoy the old school, even Japan exclusive Fire Emblem games, as well as how future remakes can learn from Echoes and make for potentially some of the best games in the franchise. If they ever do a Genealogy or Binding Blade remake, which might happen, it's been confirmed, if anyone from intelligent systems is watching this, Please take inspiration from Echoes on what you should and should not do. Having an updated art style and music, along with full voice acting, in addition to new mechanics and exclusive features, really benefited Echoes and made it one of a kind, so keep that in mind for any more remakes. But don't be afraid to make changes to the source material for the better. I don't think anyone wants to play a Binding Blade remake where Roy still doesn't promote until chapter 21, chapters 14 and 14x are still terrible, and the game has major balance issues where units like Sophia and Wendy are utterly useless. And I'm pretty sure anyone would be down with a genealogy remake that fixes the topology, gets rid of the more dated mechanics, and makes it so that mounted units aren't the only viable class in the game. So I'm very glad Echoes has established what can and can't work when it comes to remakes and future Fire Emblem games. So going back to my question at the beginning, just how good is Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia? Well, it may not be the best in the series, or on the 3DS, but it's still pretty damn good and an overall excellent game. And as far as Fire Emblem games go, it is without question one of a kind, which just goes to show that sometimes you really can't beat a classic. Thank you all very much for joining me in this blazing rant and I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm curious to know what all of you thought about Echoes and just how good you personally found this game to be, so be sure to let me know in the comments below. And this is just the beginning for the Echoes videos I've got in the pipeline, so I hope you all look forward to those. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up as it helps out the channel greatly, and if you feel like it, you can hit the subscribe button to keep updated with all my new videos and content, so you know exactly when those new Echoes videos are out. If you're interested, be sure to check out some of my other rant videos, like where I discuss whether or not Awakening and Fates have ruined Fire Emblem, or why not look at my most recent Monster Hunter video about my favourite Elder Dragons in the series. Hopefully you'll enjoy either one of them. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Amino at Blazing Knight, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. 
Anyway, that's it from me. I'll see you all next time.